This episode brought to you by Devil May Cry 5, an over-the-top action-filled game rated M for Mature, now available on Xbox One. Previously on X Month. Uh... Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to the final installment of X-Month. Well, with X-Men The Last Stand leaving the bad taste of animanium dick in most people's mouths, it only made sense to cut out the middle X-Man, so to speak, and focus on the one that people loved most. Even before the movies, Wolverine had always proven to be X-Men's most popular character, even spawning his own successful comic series. So it was decided a new movie series called X-Men Origins was to begin each film going into the backstory of a different mutant. There was actually talks for a while of Ian McKellen doing an X-Men Origins Magneto movie, but everyone wanted to see how their most popular character, Wolverine, fared with his own film. Well, let me tell you, if this is what they do with their most popular characters, I'd hate to see what they do with the shit-stained body parts of their unpopular ones. <laughs> X-Men fans have their differences, but one thing they can all agree on is X-Men Origins Wolverine sucks. What should have been the easiest movie to make the most awesome, badass, and fun became the most inconsistent, dull, and downright baffling in terms of story and character choices. Most X-Men fans and non-X-Men fans agree it's the worst of the movies. And we're here to analyze how this middle claw of a flick happened. Let's wrap up X-Month the right way. Well, a way. This is X-Men Origins Wolverine. It opens up in 1845. Well, my knowledge of Wolverine only goes back to 1974, so I guess I just have to judge it less as an adaptation and more as a shitty movie. We see a young Logan as we discover his original name is Jimmy. So wait, Jimmy? We're brothers, Jimmy. You realize that? God, I so wish they retitled this now. As his house is broken into when a stranger apparently killed his father. The kid, for the most part, plays a young Wolverine pretty well, but you have to watch out when the person in charge directs you poorly in a shot. Ah! Yep, that's the one. This kid should have a therapy session with the one from Christmas Story Live. Oh, the scary, hilarious consequences of bad direction. He extends out his bone claw. Tell me that's the name of a D&D &D character or a wrestler. Okay, good. And he stabs the man to death. But the man reveals that he was his father all along. Son. Let's dive into these characters we just met to appreciate why this is so dramatic, or we're just leaving before we establish why we're supposed to care. Get used to that. It looks like his brother Victor, who will later become Sabretooth. Okay, that I do need clarification on. Okay, good. What were you thinking? Run away into a title sequence where they show every war they ever signed up for. Marvel Civil War, Saving Private Ryan Reynolds, X-Men Apocalypse Now. And through all of it, Wolverine grew up fast into Hugh Jackman and just kind of stayed that age for the next hundred years. Until these two movies and then suddenly, white hair. And Sabretooth grew up into Lee Schreiber, who finally perfected his dolphin jump. <laughs> In all seriousness, the credits are probably the best part of the movie. Which saying that out loud makes me realize how much trouble we're in. <laughs> They're captured though and approached by William Stryker, played this time by Danny Houston. Your sentence was carried out by a firing squad of 10 hundred hours. It tickled. Who offers them the chance of a lifetime. I'm putting together a special team with special privileges. I'm calling it the Ass Avengers. They of course agree, and if you were to tell me the guy on this plane most likely to get a game-changing Marvel movie would be the one from The Proposal, I'd ask how you did things so wrong, yet so right at the same time. That's funny, Wade. It's probably not as intimidating as having a gun or fingernails of a bag lady. To the film's credit, it is mostly cast well. Schreiber's a decent saber tooth. We know Ryan Reynolds will be a good Deadpool. And maybe Wolverine listens to Black Eyed Peas dropped off in Nigeria, where they try to keep a low profile, walking like the poster for every Expendables movie. Cool! His mutant power is to bug bunny people to death! The enemy stops them in the elevator, though. 
They took the elevator? As Deadpool reveals his mutant power is using Guntana. An email said your prince was in trouble. We're here to transfer funds. I want this. But that is nothing. A souvenir. It looks like they're after a rock that the crime lord said was from a small village and he thought was just a useless souvenir. So in hindsight, they could have just asked him for the damn thing instead of claiming so many goddamn lives. He says that it's sacred. Did he break his neck or adjust it? No, oh, thank you. Can you crack my back next? Victor! I'm done. Hey, you know what'd be interesting? Showing us how Sabretooth got his bloodlust. I mean, it is called Origins, but we never goddamn see how these two became who they are. What happened when they ran away from home? They just went into war? How did that impact them as characters? How did it change them? What were they like before? What were they like after? The idea behind an origin story, especially a prequel, is to see how their actions and environment shape who they are. But who they are in the first 10 minutes is pretty much exactly who they are by the last 10 minutes. The biggest change is from a little boy to a grown man and that only lasts a minute. Stuff happens to them all throughout the movie, but we never see how it alters them in any way. This Wolverine is the exact same as this Wolverine. He just doesn't have metal claws. And he's called Jimmy. Jimmy! We can't just let you walk away. Take this for example. Jimmy leaves the team and we cut to him years later in the mountains with a woman. Who the hell is she? I mean, her name is Kayla, but who the hell is she? We don't see how they met, how they know each other, what she's like. We just know they're suddenly together and they smile so lovingly at each other that she's clearly dead. Was it the wars? Which one? All of them. Viet Civil World War Nam. I can't see Hugh Jackman ever slumming a performance, but even he doesn't seem as into it as usual. Look at his face here as he's being given the origin story of his name. He doesn't look like he's letting it sink in enough that it'll one day become his identity. He looks more like he's going through his grocery list in his head. So he told Kiyokawatsu that the moon had asked for flowers. And every mm, night, milk, he looks up in the sauce, string and cheese. Sees them. I wonder if Count Chocula is in season can never yet. Touch her again. He's not even hiding his accent half the time. So you're gonna take me to this island? You uh, have those powers over me? I ain't living here so you tell me where Victor is. I'm just gonna ask nicely. I'm letting this go by. Come on, bub. He sounds like an angry and constipated Rocco. Where I can kill Creed, Stryker, and pretty much everyone you hate in this world. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. But Jimmy's brother finds like you'd remember her name if I said it and pours fake blood all over her. I originally meant this as a joke, but as we find out later, that is what actually happens. If I can tell from a distance that's not real, how can this dumbass with heightened senses not pick that up? Even this supposed big emotional moment seems half-assed, as the music and his screaming seems randomly cut short. This whole film feels like it was written by a Google program. Protagonist befriends love interest for five minutes of screen time. Old friend betrays protagonist at exactly 30 minute mark. Protagonist screens for 5.1 seconds. This should equal you crying. Why aren't you crying? You're not from around here, are you? Actually, my name's Sabretooth. I chose it based on a story where a spirit came down to Earth. And you know what? I chose it because it's cool. Well, why can't that be a thing? The cat dragged in. Guys, whatever this is, take it outside. Now, Skeeter, they ain't hurting nobody. <laughs> Jimmy finds Sabretooth, and they have an amazingly bad action sequence that you can barely make out because it's shot and edited, I think, by an actual Wolverine. <laughs> no, yeah, they say a firing squad tickles, but a log, that's what takes the mighty Wolverine out of action. <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? He wakes up in a hospital where Stryker approaches him just in time to do his Pacino. Six years I've been here. No one knew me and then you show up and the next day she's dead. When my children come to play with their toys. Stryker offers Jimmy a procedure to make him indestructible, despite him already being indestructible, by giving him an animantium skeleton. I'm so glad we haven't seen this imagery yet. Hugh Jackman's acted this being experiment to shtick so much, he's literally playing it in his sleep. Or dead, I believe that too. Well, I guess I can't die. We just can't resuscitate this movie. He wakes up though, hearing that they want to erase his memory, and he goes after them. But first... A tasteful glimpse of me bottom for the ladies. <laughs> Do director 
guys think if they just emphasize an X, that makes a good X-Men movie? Of course, it wouldn't be a comic book origin story without the friggin' nicest silver-haired angels that offer parental advice to our main character. Though their kindness might be characterized as borderline insanity if you would give shelter to a naked man breathing heavily in your barn. It's cold. Yeah, it's usually bigger than that. Oh, just had a rough night. Yeah, you can say that. Well, I see no threat emulating from this. Feel free to stay in our home and play with my grandchildren. So Jimmy, despite using them earlier, apparently forgot he had claws as he looked incredibly surprised when they pop out of his knuckles. After he picked them up from Toontown, what is up with those effects? It looks like someone ripped off the fangs from the Tiger and Ice Age and glued them onto his hand. The first film had half the budget of this one and they made them look okay. This flick, I keep expecting cartoon faces to pop on them like, Hi, Jimmy, where are your, your claws? claws? <laughs> I swear I'm gonna pay for it. Well, logically, I should throw your crazy ass out, but we're Canadian! We have a stereotype to keep up. <laughs> Mostly. The old man gives Jimmy his son's jacket, who, thank God, also happened to be a muscle-bound beefcake, as the missus brings in some refreshments for them. I brought you some. Oh dear, I'll have to make more. Weapon X is in the barn. Well, glad to know we elevated from Blue Sky Animation to DreamWorks Animation in the same film. Blow him to bits. Let's see if he can survive that. Uh, sir, he survived exactly that! You know, I'm not gonna lie, I was actually enjoying that few minutes with the old couple. That's probably why they got rid of it so fast. We get a chase scene that on paper sounds pretty cool, with a chopper, motorcycle, and jeep flying around and blowing shit up. But once again, it's shot and edited like a monkey, shaking you by the shoulders, going, ah, ah, ah. It's legitimately sad when the trailer holds longer on a shot than the actual movie does. It's funny how good innocent people tend to die around you. By the way, if you're wondering if lighting the gas leading to a giant explosion and walking away without looking in 2009 was cliched, no. It was embarrassingly cliched. Devil May Cry 5 is the most amazing game ever. You can do anything with it. Chop vegetables, clean the bathroom, get in fights with it, sometimes it fights back, but mostly you just play it. Playing it is the best thing to do with it, because it's a game. You know why this series is awesome, it's the fifth one for crying out loud. If you ever need to just slice and dice some demons while looking hella nice, this is the game for you. It features three demon hunters, each with a unique playstyle. You can play as Dante, Nero, or the mysterious new protagonist, V. With all three characters bringing equal amounts of swagger and skill, you can fight off demon hoarders with as much smoke and sexy style as you can imagine. Because imagining devils crying is sexy. You don't need to take my word for it, but do, because it's me. But even if you didn't, here's some other people that say things. Bleeding Cool calls it an elegant symphony of of obliteration. That's amazing. Dual Shockers calls it one hell of a good time. Equally amazing. My cat says meow. Amazing. And Game Rant calls Devil May Cry the perfect action game. That's so amazing I'm just gonna say the word amazing again but in a slightly higher pitch. Amazing. So come on and kick some demon ass with Devil May Cry 5 and remember, games play best on Xbox One. To get Devil May Cry 5, do not call this number, but instead go to a video game store or purchase it online. Go now! Go now! Finish this video, actually, because, you know, I'm in it, but, you know, go now! Afterwards, after you watch the video, just, just do it right now! What are you waiting for? Just go! Go! What's wrong with you? It's an amazing game! Everyone knows it's an amazing game! Just, just, just do it! Do it! What, what, are you sick? Are you sick? This game can cure you! It's medicine! Devil May Cry 5 is medicine! I'm legally required to tell you that Devil May Cry 5 is not medicine, but it makes you feel so good that it's like medicine! What are you gonna do anyway? You're sick! You might as well play video games! What's wrong with you? Go get it! It's your problem! Go! Go! So after summing up how people are liking this movie... Colonel, this is turning into a disaster. Wolverine rides to Vegas, where I'm not gonna lie, at this point I'd rather just see him gamble than carry out whatever mission he was on. Three Claw Stud? I totally watched that. But maybe Duke's nose. Fred Dukes? Develop a bit of eating disorder. We all got our coping mechanisms. Oh, yeah. So, you remember in X-Men a character called the Blob? 
One of the more famous foes whose mutant power was an indestructibly obese body. Well, now he's just a dude who put on a lot of weight. Still a mutant, but his powers have absolutely nothing to do with his size. He just let himself go. It's like saying Superman is still an alien, but he doesn't have superhuman strength. He just mimicked pumping iron a lot. Come on, man, look at him. Blob. Blob had bitch tits. Get in my belly! You know, with how PC things are becoming, you think an actor who isn't overweight playing an overweight character would be called Fatface? Jimmy beats him up to get information on where Sabretooth and Stryker are, and it looks like the two of them are out hunting another mutant. A young Peter Badanovich! Oh, please don't! Just remember please when we meet up don't. years later and I grow my hair blonde and I never talk? We are never to reference this. Blob says Jimmy can find another mutant who escapes Stryker's experiments named Gambit. I don't really know why he looks like Sawyer from Lost, but he gives us the only cool shot in the movie, so I have no choice but to like him. Two years I rotten in that hell and I never go <laughs> That's kind of funny too. Tell me something, Jimmy. But still not as funny as when he calls him that. You even know how to kill me. I'm gonna cut your goddamn head off. He was literally just knocked out. How'd he get up there so fast? And I don't know aeronautics, but I'm pretty sure you can't helicopter down via cane the same way Dixie Kong does with her hair. You're Gambit! You and Dixie Kong should not be mentioned in the same sentence! Sabretooth escapes as Jimmy and Gambit stay for... Honestly, no reason to fight. This is a cartoon. All that's missing is a Tom and Jerry scream when he falls. Ah! Gambit finally agrees to help Jimmy get Stryker as Stryker puts the finishing touches on his latest mutant experiment. A few more hours. And he will respond to my commands. Absolutely. We're gonna make Momo a reality urban legend, my ass! Jimmy finally catches up with Stryker, and you gotta love how our lead is so unimpressive he's not even worth a head turn. I've learned that nothing motivates the men in your family like revenge. But gasp! What's-her-face is still alive! Wow, that's so underwhelming and not worth shitting a care that even Jimmy doesn't know how to react to it. He just kind of awkwardly kneels and lets out a reverse quack. <sighs> Wolverine. It's revealed that she worked with Stryker because he's holding her sister hostage, and her mutant power is she can touch people and influence them to think whatever she'd like. Now, on top of asking why the hell she doesn't just use that power to have Stryker hand her sister over, I mean CRY! See, from a storytelling standpoint, how cool it would have been if we saw them meet. She holds his hand, and from that point on, we have to re-watch the scene and ask, was this real love or just her mutant power? There could have been a brilliant dramatic setup here. But because that would mean making a connection with the characters instead of just doing things. Gotta do this thing, gotta do this thing, gotta do this thing. We're developed now. Jimmy tells her exactly what he told Fox after seeing this movie. I'm just a fool who got played. So obviously it's time to fight those who wronged him or he walks away. Wolverine. You know, this is all so amazingly underwhelming, you gotta wonder what Stryker was talking about at the end of X2. Remember when he was bringing up his past? You're an animal then, you're an animal now. If you really knew about your past, what kind of person you were, the work we did together. We stole a rock, gave you some tiny tune claws, and this lady you barely know didn't die. We were animals, animals! And I guess Sabretooth reveals why he suddenly betrayed his brother. Please Give me the adamantium. Test came. We had a deal! You would never survive the operation. So, over a hundred years of knowing this guy and you totally betray him because you just wanted adamantium in your bones? Something the guy says wouldn't work anyway? I think Tenderheart and Grumpy Bear have a more complex rivalry than that! <laughs> Wolverine returns and helps free all the mutant cameos, and yeah, let's get this over with. The mutant that was being worked on earlier was Deadpool. Wait, is that you? By God, it's like the comic leaped onto the screen. Yeah, Striker finally figured out how to shut you up. But brilliant trolling can't keep one silent for long. Hey, I'm just keeping a cannon.
Sadly, that's not what happens in this film, though. The, oh my god, can you imagine every copy of this movie they made afterwards? They put that part in and that's where it ends. They roll the credits and everything. Oh my god, Ryan Reynolds, get on that! As Deadpool uses all the mutant powers surgically given to him. The dumb. It hurts. As Sabretooth, right the hell out of nowhere, decides he likes Jimmy again, and they decide to fight him. <laughs> All this high-tech ingenuity and you have to type in your commands like a 1980s RPG? <laughs> Got some great Spaceballs logic working here. It's a competition of which sucky effect can destroy the other. Toy Story Claws are invaders in laser beams! Only the crappiest shall survive! They end up defeating him, but as Jimmy says, this isn't over. This doesn't change anything between us, Victor. We're brothers, and brothers look out for each other. Unless your memory's erased and I go working for a magnet man, you know how it goes. Who gives a dick is dying, though, and Jimmy goes to say goodbye. Really? You don't look it. You don't even seem annoyed to be dying. You can say things all you want, movie, but unless you commit to it. <laughs> Stryker shoots two animanium bullets into his head and... Yep, that's twice they try to fake you out that he might die. Ooh, and here's another nail biter. Spider-Man might not be back in Endgame, see far from home. <clears throat> I should make you pull the trigger, but that would make us no better than you. Walk into your feet, bleed. Well, that'll result in tons of people dying, but why start making sense now? Well, hi there, Mr. Clean. Mighty glad to know you. You're safe now. Who are you? Huh, must have missed those on the x-ray. Also weird that Jimmy never told Xavier exactly what he did remember. Yeah, I woke up around a destroy power plant on this exact date. Oh yes, I was totally there. With that starting point, I'm sure we can piece together where you came from. Oh, guess it doesn't matter. Good luck. Eh, it is a shame that Gambit guy didn't get much screen time, but I'm sure he'll get another starring role in a big moneymaker. And that was X-Men Origins Jimmy. I mean Wolverine, I mean... Jimmy. Yeah, because this definitely was not Wolverine. Wolverine is one of the coolest characters in comic book history, but none of that would be reflected if you went off of this movie alone. It doesn't add up to the continuity of the films, it doesn't please any comic fans. It's way too boring and cliched to entertain newcomers, it's just a disaster. X-Men has had a shaky history in both comics and film, but when it comes to the absolute worst X-Men flick there is, you need look no further than X-Men Origins Jimmy. And that was X Month. I hope everybody had a good time. And I'm ready! Hyper, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I was in the animated intro, so I just assumed I'd be flying around as Rogue. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that, that, that was more of a style thing. Wait, so I'm, I'm not going to be an X Men? Well, aren't we all X Men in our hearts? No. We are now. Congratulations! I'll make it up to you later. Just get out of here! So I hope you enjoyed X Month and- I'm ready. Oh, for God's sake. I take offense at that. I'm not having us as the X-Men. Then why'd you have us in the intro? I just told the animator to draw something cool. Yeah, that was cool. Now let's actually do it. I can't. X Month is over, so get out of here. Fine. Great. I'm ready. How did you even- I'm ready for my cameo as Dadly. I'm not doing that. And besides, you didn't cameo anywhere else. Sure I did. Here, look. You see? You always need a cameo from the creator. You didn't create the Nostalgia Critic. Sure I did. Look, when a man and a woman love each other very much, beat it! Hey, Critic, we're here for X Month. Oh my god, it's already over! And you didn't invite us? Well, it was your idea! Exactly. exactly! Oh my god, can you just go away before other people spontaneously appear in my corner? Ah! You false advertised, Critic! Yeah, none of us were in X Month. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll make it up to you all somehow. Oh, you mean by reviewing a movie starring a person you never wanted to talk about again? Stop right there! I know how this works! You bring up a movie or a person I don't want to talk about, and once I talk about them, their picture pops up and I'm stuck reviewing it. Well, I'm not falling for it this time, so get out! Well, I think she was just talking about- Out! Out! Everybody out! Fireball! Out! Oh, it's like Christmas with the Hitlers! Lousiest cameo I've ever had. 
there, now I'm not bound to anything. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to! Damn it! <laughs>Hello, Doug Walker here, and The Hunger Project is this week's charity shout-out. This organization envisions a world where every woman, man, and child leads a healthy, fulfilling life of self-reliance and dignity. Their mission is to end hunger and poverty by pioneering sustainable, grassroots, empowered-centered strategies and advocating for their widespread adoption in countries throughout the world. Through their work to end hunger, they recognize these 10 principles as being fundamental to the Hunger Project. Human dignity, gender equality, empowerment, leverage, interconnectedness, sustainability, social transformation, holistic approach, decentralization, and transformative leadership. World hunger can be ended, but not by merely doing more of the same. Hunger is primarily a human issue, and ending hunger requires principles that are consistent with shared humanity. If you agree with this and want to see hunger end as much as these people do, then click on the link and donate to their wonderful cause.